if you've been struggling with being able to shred fast. Then in this video, I'm going to share with you three common mistakes I come across with my students that are holding them back the most. And for those who don't know me, my name is Lucas and I help guitar players to get over that intermediate rut to finally get their playing where it deserves to be after all those years. So let's now get into the video. With shredding, it's not just about playing fast. It's about not being held back technically when expressing yourself musically. But often you come across things like speed is not important, it doesn't sound musical and all of that bullshit. But the moment you're able to shred, you realize how great it sounds. So here is the first thing I come across the most when helping guitar players with their speed. And that is a fixed mindset. There is no need to dive into any of the nitty gritty technical stuff if your mindset is not in the right place. Simply as whether you think you can or can't, you're always right. So even if I give you the best tools in the world, but your mindset is set on I'll never be able to play fast, I wasn't born to play fast, you'll just take those tools and use them in a way to prove yourself you are right with your initial statement. With that being said, here is a little test you can try. Grab the note C on the string G and just play as fast as you can. If you've managed to play at least as fast as this, then that's the same exact speed that makes things look fast such as the run I've played previously. As you can see, it's not about the picking hand not being fast enough. It's about people being afraid of just playing fast. So that's the first thing you need to realize. Stop holding yourself back and being afraid of sounding bad. You're in a practice room, you meant to sound bad. You can't be just walking around, focusing on the footwork, making sure to lay down the feet properly and then expecting that this proper walking technique will get you sprinting. It's bullshit, it's never going to happen. Only by sprinting you'll realize you might be moving your hands around too much and it will be better to bring them closer to your body to drive your motion forward. The exact thing works with playing fast. Only by playing fast, you learn how to play fast. Moving on to the second thing, picking mechanics. We all have different bodies and different hands. So here is what at least works for me and my students. For the motion to come from the wrist rather than the entire arm. In terms of the wrist, it's worth going from this angle that is used often for riffing to more of a flat tilt where the pick is parallel to the strings. Thanks to this approach, any of the alternate picking, echo picking, or sweep picking will become much easier to play in higher tempos. You can also try tilting your wrist around to see what feels more natural. So let's say if you're changing the strings on upstroke, you tilt your hand more this way. So it goes one, two, three, and your pick is naturally outside the string, making it easier to pick it with upstroke. So that's known as the downward escape motion. And then if you're changing the string on downstroke, then you can tilt your hand the other way, so the strings are not in the way when changing the strings on downstrokes. Such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So give it a try and see whether that makes any difference to your playing. But I've experienced with my students that it tends to get them confused and they focus on it when playing more than it's needed. Your hands are clever and unique at the same time. That's why they will find its perfect way how to position themselves to exactly achieve the motion you're after. And the last thing I want to share with you is managing your tension. A common misconception is that gripping harder and tensing up will give you more control, when in reality it's the opposite and it applies to both of your hands, simply as if you're picking too hard, it's going to sound terrible and you won't be able to reach those higher tempos. And at the same time, if you're applying too much pressure with your fretting hand, you won't be able to return in time to the fret. So just relax and shred lightly. A 
great exercise to try is the simple run and sprint method where you play these frets four seven five four five seven and you approach them as eighth triplets and then move to the 16 triplets and you can add as many gaps in between as you want as the goal is to start getting used to those higher tempos. Obviously it will require you to work on this exercise at least for a few weeks, but you will be able to start playing faster, way faster with this approach, rather than trying to increase your BPM by 1 BPM at a time and hoping that you will magically start playing fast one day. So thank you so much for being here and supporting this channel by watching these videos. But most importantly, if this approach opened your eyes, please let me know by hitting the like button. And as mentioned, if you're feeling stuck with your playing and just can't figure out on your own how to get to that advanced level of playing to have the ultimate freedom over your instrument, then click the first link in the description. Don't worry, there is no webinar, free training, none of that. It's just a video of me telling you how I can help you to get there. In full transparency, it is a website designed to sell you something. I'm not going to pretend it's not. You don't have to click it. I really don't mind if you do click it or not. But if you had enough of being stuck with your playing for way too long, then feel free to check it out. Apart from that, thanks for being here. Keep shredding and I'll see you in the next video.